Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is September 14th, 2020, and this is episode 90, Big 9-0. So thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at Robin Hood. It's the Justice Arc. This is three of six in this arc, and it's a Chuck Dixon book. We'll look a little at the uh, credits in just a moment here, but let's take a look at this um, cover again. Um, or for the first time, if you have not looked at it. It's... I. The problem I'm having with this is... The uh, attacker is blends in too much with the background, and I think this has been happening on all these um, these uh, covers for Robin Hood on this on this arc. And uh, Robin Hood actually looks pretty good; you can really see her pretty well. But um, it just it just looks odd. You're looking at it first; you don't know if it's just a tree trunk coming in and smashing into her or what. So really difficult to differentiate what's going on here. But it's actually like a, a golem's a golem. I don't know if you saw a golem or a golem. Stone golem uh, grabbing her by the waist. Now, as I recall, this doesn't happen in the book exactly like this. She does get attacked by one, but doesn't get grabbed like that. So I will not subvert expectations, but I just did probably. Okay, like I said, this is part three of G. And it uh, picks up with Robin being chased by the mayor's robotic police force. Plus, she's uh, got a guy named Emmett around that she's been hanging out with who's been possessed, unknown to her, by somebody named Synapse. And Emmett's got multiple personalities as it is, and he can turn into the, the um, go uh, golem. So you know that uh, there's going to be a little bit of that going on snaps is one of the uh, enemies of Robin Hood and we also have an old childhood friend of Emmett's along named Emily that they um, met up in happenstance when they were in the same building now they've gone to a place called the underground and they're going all three of them are going there for the first time they were able to sneak down here and uh, avoid the, the robots which were coming after them hot and heavy so a lot happens in this cave. Uh, basically, they they don't know where they're going, and at some point they find this long bridge, this old ancient bridge, and um, Robin Hood can't believe how much, uh, how many tunnels and how much room there is underneath the city. She thinks it goes all way past out the city into the countryside, um, and then at the point where she's testing the bridge. Um, the uh, synapse takes over Emmett and um, becomes the golem and wrecks the bridge basically with his weight trying to kill off Robin trying to send her to the, the bottom but Robin's got a lot of agility and other special powers um, she is human but she's, she is blessed with a number of uh, talents uh, some of them supernatural given to her I think she I believe she died at one point in the first issue and then she kind of came back reincarnated as this Robin Hood with a uh, blind in the left eye so we go back to the city now the mayor Mayor Nguyen working with the seamstress has actually invented another line this is like uh, the third generation of robots and she's got 10 of them which she plans to introduce at the policeman's ball and potentially hoping to eventually lay off all the policemen in the city so she can kind of control it herself because she knows what's best for the voters, apparently. And apparently they're using somebody from a, a previous issue here, the, at least his brain, to run a computer. I'm not sure who that is. I did not read the last few arcs. So Robin's still fighting the golem, going all over the place. It's a it's a good chase scene, really well done. Um, she's snaking in and out of it, out of uh, getting captured or getting killed. She thinks she's tricked the golem into falling. She gets back to Emily, and suddenly um, the golem's back as uh, it's crawled up the the cliff. So I guess it it it's pretty much unstoppable and just keeps coming after Robin. Robin's running out of 
kinds of arrows to use. She tells Emily to run away one way. She's going to go the other. Emily runs into one cave with a lot of bats. Um, and Robin goes into one that's got a lot of roots coming down from the surface. She's able to sneak through uh, while Emily's able to f fend off the bats with this cape, which was um, Emmett's cape. And it's, it seems to be there's somebody or some spirit or something in the cape. And it's actually helping em Emily. So I don't know if that's Emmett himself or it's another being. Meantime, Robin's fallen all the way down to this underground pool of water and Gollum comes out again attacking. And it looks like she's she's about to get it when this tree creature, which happens to be under there, is Spriggan, who is transformed just like Emmett turns into the Gollum, Spriggan turns into this giant tree. Almost kind of like an ant, but seems to move a lot more quickly. He's able to grab the Gollum and knock him out. And it's, I guess it's very very hard on Spriggan because he ends up collapsing too and that's where it leaves us at the, uh, the little cliffhanger. Emily's in one part of this cave somewhere, Robin's in the other at the very bottom with Emmett who's po possessed for the moment. She doesn't know if the golem wakes up, if it's gonna be Emmett or Synapse. She's hoping she can get Snaps out of there somehow and then we've got Spriggan knocked out so and she's got the robot cops upstairs trying to go after her so pretty good um issue four uh is on its way i'm assuming it says next month so october let me take a look at that cover yeah i just want to go through here real quick uh, dave francini and chuck dixon came up with a story on this chuck dixon was the writer babi babisu cortez was the artist and uh i i think the art's pretty good a lot of action, a lot of movement. It was a really action-packed issue, so I like that. So this this arc has been fun. Um, I wouldn't give it an A. I'd give it like a solid B, B plus, right in there. Um, so far, so good. It's got a lot of different sub stories and subplots going on, which I like. And uh, well, or there's some things you can tell are coming around the corner, but you don't know when they're going to appear or what exactly they're going to be. So. So far, so good. We can take a quick look at some of the other Xenoscopes, things that are out here. Bell, Hearts and Minds, co-starring Gretel, uh, Grim Fairy Tales, The Dark Book. They've been pushing that, issue 38. This one's a one-shot, by the way, coming soon. Van Helsling versus The League of Monsters. Supposedly that's in the stores now. I don't think I've seen that one out there yet. Conspiracy, I know that one's been out. Looks like it's an alien cover-up. Bell, Ghost, and Goblins. It's also a one-shot. I haven't seen that either. Red Agent. Island of Dr. Moreau. Five-issue series. And that's supposedly out as well. Shang. The new three issue series and Unbound. It says available now, so I haven't seen this either. So here's some things coming out from our friends at Xenoscope. And once again, we end with the same cover that has been on the last couple. Okay, so I'm recommending this arc for now. Um, it's been good, it's been enjoyable. It's I'm a little bit lost because I didn't read the last arc, but um, they do give you a little synopsis at the front. Synopsis, I'm talking synopsis, and there's synopsis in the character in the story. So it gets you a little bit up to speed, but not fully. Um, so recommend, um, if you like uh, Robin Hood, you're going to love this, I think. Uh, I've, I uh, was on, on the original arc on that and then started reading other things, but I like the original arc as well. Can recommend that so thank you for stopping by the temple of tomes this is indie comics jones please subscribe please like please leave comments and we'll see you next time here in the temple of tomes this is indie comics jones bidding you adieu